Well, today we've got this R22 refrigeration system on a walk-in cooler, and it's low on gas. It's just I found one of the fittings, uh, access fittings, was leaking a little bit. I'll change the um, Schrader in it, tape it up with Teflon tape. But um, the I'm going to change it over to 407F. Condenser needs to be cleaned out. And this is our evaporator coil. Now I checked it for leaks. And this expansion valve, it's a sweat in. It's a, which is good for leaks, but it's hard to change the valve. Sometimes you have problems with the uh, up here. I checked the solenoid valve for leaks. Now here's something that wasn't necessary. The guy put a P-trap in this one. P-trap is designed for when the refrigerant leaving has the oil in it. It collects here, so it can go up to the roof. But this compresses downhill, so you didn't need this. It should have been just piped straight downhill. This actually will retard the oil transfer or return to the compressor. But it's there, and I'm not going to change it now. But it looks like they put the bulb and yeah, they put the expansion valve bulb in a, in a horizontal, a vertical position. Should have been on. See, this pipe should have been straight, and the expansion valve bulb would have been good just to mount it straight, level like that. But it's, it works. Okay, I reclaimed it. I'm going to take it into a vacuum as low as I can with this back rack. I don't see the need for getting um, my vacuum pump out. I don't have moisture in the system or air in the system. The Actually the dryer filter is green still. It might be a good idea to change the dryer filter. Let's see if I have that one. This place has chiggers. And they're the worst. They get on your pants and your feet. I sprayed bug spray for chiggers on my shoes and my knees and stuff. But you go home and the next day you have uh, bite marks all over your stomach, your legs, your arms your back and they itch for a week. It's like bad, really bad mosquito bites. This uh, this had his fiberglass cover on. I don't know where it went to. The guy made it years ago. But I'm going to talk to him about putting a sheet metal cover on this. Because it's just getting rain on the electrical controls and motors and stuff. They're not waterproof weatherproof it'll handle it for a little bit but in time it'll uh, it'll rust out and you'll end up with uh, in ruining the control or something change that compressor in uh, 2011 it's been a couple years now um. Okay, this is the 407F. Let's see right there, this is 407F. I'll turn it right there. How's that? Is that better? <laughs> okay. Uh, now what I want to do is put some gas in the system. And both the low side, bring it out of a vacuum. Refrigerants are mixtures of refrigerants. And I don't really, there wasn't much 22 left in there, maybe, you know, 
microscopic amount which I don't see the need to pull a deep vacuum on it was a uh, uh, 17 inches of mercury I think it was fine 16 inches and now I got six pounds pressure here and here so I'm going to let the gas out change the shredders Trader. Add it to the low side because that's just going to go into the compressor. Uh, this compressor has mineral oil in it. It's running R22. I'm adding 15 to 20 percent, my judgment actually, uh, of polyester oil. And what that'll do is the old mineral oil connected to the R22, the chlorine in it, and that's what brought it back to the compressor. The POE oil floats through the system, and what it'll do is it'll push the mineral oil back to the compressor along with, and come back along with it. There shouldn't be too much oil in the system. The old mineral oil probably hanging up in the receiver tank and the condenser and evaporated to some extent. Okay, let's get it to up. Clean off our pump. This is a good pump. It's made by Thermal, the company in Thermal. I've been using it. I've been using these since the 70s. They're really good. They make a vacuum gate, a pump also that I have if I'm working on a semi-hermetic coupling unit. 
it's um, it's got a plastic tube coming off the bottom. I'll put that right. Take the plug off the Copeland semi hermetic. Put the tube right into the oil and drain it out. That works very good. We've gone through a lot of those over the years. Okay, we've got oil, and now we want to get some gas. Okay, new. Let's see. Five twenty seven one five. so many years you know when to change it. I just have to, I don't know if you can see the sight glass in there, but there's a lot of bubbles. And I'm going to fill it up until we have no bubbles. Now if it got, moist, got air in the system with moisture in it, this dot would have turned yellow. And it's still pale green. It, it, darker green would be good, but it's okay there. bubbles in there that are increasing a little bit. But I found it's always good to leave a couple little bubbles. That's too much. The expansion valve is opening and closing right now. As it gets co colder in the system, it'll just close and it'll show completely full. But at this point, the system's warm. And I like to put leave a couple little bubbles there. That way it tells me I didn't overcharge the system. But I'm going to put a little bit more in there now. I'm using my my mirror sun sun flashlight. I call it my thermonuclear explosion from the suns. I call my thermonuclear flashlight. We see the bubbles almost completely cleared up. And I like that right there. But let's give it a couple minutes because the expansion valve's opening and closing right now. And what I want to do is go check the TD across the evaporator, superheat, with my fluke meter. See if we're feeding the evaporator coil evenly, properly. Now well, we've got a sun block, a, a cloud block in our sunlight here. All right, see now we got some bubbles in there. is 244 for 407F and my suction is 52. It's pretty close to what 22 should be. What I want to do is blow the condenser out with the CO2 now and drop this down. Now if this is hip pressure is too high because the condenser is dirty it's going to move too much refrigerant. It's going to increase the flow through the expansion valve and give you, uh, the system won't be in balance properly. And you'll have problems like the coil icing up um, and, and things like that. But right now I'm going to uh, blow the condenser out. All right. 
It's nice and clean for the summer time. So I got a few bubbles in the sight glass. I'm going to fill it up a little, a little bit more than that. Okay, my suction pressure is 63. The superheat's 20. Sub cooling is three. I have a full sight glass. Turn line temperature, I'm getting, I'm reading 54 on it. That's the suction cooling, cooling the compressor off. And my uh, liquid line's 100 degrees. It's not a good. It's not a good sub cooling reading because I'm taking it off the hot gas discharge line and not the liquid line. But what I've always depended on was, was the sight glass and not the. If it's an air conditioning system, you'd have to go by the sub cooling and the um, superheat. But refrigeration systems, I just really don't have to do that. I mean, it's, if you see your suction line is, is hot, then you know your superheat is way off and you've got to go adjust it. I opened it up and you can see a lot more condensation coming back and that's a good sign. And it, the condensation is stopping here. If the condensation went on to the whole compressor, then that would be a sign that I've got that my valve is open too much and my superheat is too low. But uh, even if this was a freezer and the line would frost back and stops here, that's what you want. You don't want if it's a freezer, you don't want frost on the head of the compressor because then your superheat's too low, your valve is, is open too much, and you got to close your valve off. But this compressor is suction cooled, and that's the important. It's important to keep it uh, comfortable. I can, yeah, it's very comfortable. It's not not blistering hot by any means. Sometimes you get a compressor in a hot summertime where you could cook an egg on it. I mean, you couldn't keep your hand on it at all. It's it's just warm. It's not even hot. It's just warm. It, that's perfect. So this 407F is working pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to come back and change this pressure control. This is a low pressure control. It's connected to the, 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 the weeds. Into, it's connected to the low low side, the suction side. So what I'll do is I'll pump it down like I did a little while ago, and I'll just uh, change it. It's very easy to do, and then I have to set it. But my sight glass is full. Everything looks good. Okay guys, that's it from Vermillion, Ohio.